Hello, this video is a tutorial explaining how to use machine learning to train an object detection neural network through Google's TensorFlow Object Detection API on Windows 10. By following the steps described in this tutorial, you will be able to create your own object detector that can locate and identify specific objects in images, videos, or live webcam feeds. For the tutorial, I will explain how to train a pinnacle deck playing card detector that can identify card ranks 9 through ace even when there is a busy background or when the cards are overlapping. You can use this tutorial to practice training your own pinnacle deck detector, or you can use your own images to train your own object detector. All the images, data, and scripts I use to train the card detector are provided in the GitHub page linked in the video description below. The GitHub page also has a written version of the tutorial, which this video will follow. This tutorial is made for Windows 10, but it should work on Windows 7 or 8. It can also be used for Linux-based operating systems, but the file paths and terminal commands will have to be changed to match the Linux style. This tutorial starts from scratch and explains how to set up the TensorFlow Object Detection API, prepare your training images and data, and train the object detector. <clears throat> there are eight steps to this process. 1. Install TensorFlow GPU. 2. Set up object detection directory structure in Anaconda Virtual Environment. 3 gather and label pictures, four, generate training data, five, create label map and configure training, six, train the object detector, seven, export the inference graph, and eight, test and use your newly trained object detector. All right, let's get started. The first step is to install TensorFlow GPU on your computer. I'm actually gonna punt on this step because there's a number of good YouTube videos that describe how to do this. I recommend watching Mark J's video, How to Install TensorFlow GPU Version 1.4 on Windows 10, which is linked in the description below. This video is made for TensorFlow GPU Version 1.4, but the most recent version is 1.5. This tutorial will use version 1.5 because it supports newer toolkits and because it's generally a good idea to use the most up-to-date version of software. When you issue the pip install command, as instructed in Mark's video, it will automatically install version 1.5, or whatever the most recent version is. <clears throat> Instead of installing CUDA version 8.0 and CDN version 6.0, as instructed in Mark's video, install version CUDA version 9.0 and CUDN version 7.0 for CUDA 9.0, because they are the, these are the newer versions and they're supported by TensorFlow GPU version 1.5. As future versions of TensorFlow are released, you will likely need to continue updating the CUDA and CUDNN versions to the latest supported version. Be sure to install Anaconda with Python 3.6 as instructed in the video, as the Anaconda virtual environment will be used for the rest of this tutorial. Once you've got TensorFlow GPU, CUDA, CUDNN, and Anaconda installed, the next step is to get the TensorFlow object detection directory and Anaconda virtual environment set up. The TensorFlow Object Detection API requires using the specific directory structure provided in its GitHub repository. It also requires several additional Python packages, some additions to the path and Python path variables, and some extra commands to get everything ready to run or train an object detection model. Setting everything up is kind of painful and meticulous, but once everything ready is ready, the rest of the tutorial is easy. First, create a folder directly in C and name it TensorFlow1. Download the full TensorFlow Models repository from the link given in the video description below. Once it's done downloading, open the zip file and extract the Models Master folder directly into the TensorFlow 1 folder. Okay. Once it's done extracting, go in and rename the Models Master folder to Just Models. Second, go to the TensorFlow Model Zoo page by using the link in the video description below. TensorFlow provides several different object detection models which are pre-trained classifiers that have a specific neural network architecture. Some models, such as the SSD MobileNet model, have a high speed but lower accuracy, while other models, such as the faster RCNN Inception model, have a low speed but high accuracy. I initially started with the SSD MobileNet V1 model, but I didn't do a very good job identifying the cards in my images. I retrained my detector on the faster RCNN Inception V2 model, and the detection worked considerably better. However, it had a noticeably slower speed. You can choose which model to train your object detection classifier on. 
If you're planning on using an object detector on a device with low computational power, such as a smartphone or a Raspberry Pi, use the SSD mobile net model. If you'll be running your detector on a decently powered desktop or laptop, go ahead and use one of the faster RCNN models. This tutorial will use the faster RCNN Inception V2 model, so click the link to download it. Go back to the TensorFlow 1 folder <clears throat> and navigate to the Models, Research, Object Detection folder. Once the faster RCNN tar.gz file has finished downloading, extract its contents to the Object Detection folder. Finally, go to my GitHub repository for this tutorial, which is linked in the video description below. The repository contains the images and annotation data needed to train the Pinochle Deck playing card detector. It also contains Python scripts that will be used to generate the training data. Finally, it has some scripts that we can use to test the detector on images, video, and webcam feeds. Download the repository. Once it's finished downloading, go ahead and open it up and extract all of the files directly into the object detection folder. You can go ahead and replace the existing README file with the new one. In this video, I'll start from scratch with just the card images and show how they're labeled, how the TFR records are generated, how the label map is created, and how the training file is configured. Since we're starting from scratch, go ahead and delete the following files from the repository you just downloaded, and we'll regenerate them in the next part of this video. First, go into the training folder and delete the label map and config files there. Then go to the inference graph folder and delete the placeholder file there. Finally, go into the images folder and delete the test labels and train labels CSV files. Now, if you want to practice training my pinochle deck detector, leave all of the pictures and XML files in the test and train folders intact. <clears throat> if you want to create your own object detector using your own images, We'll go ahead and delete all of the files in the test and train folders and we'll replace them with new ones. Since we're starting from scratch in this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the files in the type train folder and in the test folder. At this point, here's what your object detection folder should look like. The following folders and files should have been added to the original object detection directory. First, the faster RCNN model file that you downloaded from the model zoo. Oops. Then, the doc, images, inference graph, and training folders that you got from my GitHub repository, as well as the generate TF record, object detection image, video, webcam, and then XML to CSV Python scripts, and the test and test1 files. The training folder should be empty, and so should the inference graph folder. The images folder should have the images and XML files from my Pinochle deck detector. If you're training your own, uh, detector from scratch, both of these folders should be empty. Now that the directories are all set up, it's time to set up an Anaconda virtual environment for TensorFlow GPU. This portion of the setup involves typing a lot of commands in the command prompt. I have all the commands written out in my GitHub tutorial, so you can either type the commands in yourself or just copy paste them from my tutorial. First, find the Anaconda command prompt in the start menu. Run it as administrator. Create a new virtual environment called TensorFlow1 by entering conda create n tensorflow one pip. It might take a while to set up the new environment. Once it's finished setting up, activate the virtual environment by entering activate tensorflow1. This activates the environment. Anytime the environment is active, you will see the tensorflow1 in parentheses before the command prompt. Install TensorFlow GPU in this environment by entering pip install dash dash ignore installed dash dash upgrade TensorFlow GPU. It'll take a little while for TensorFlow GPU to install. After it is installed, install the other necessary packages by issuing the following commands. Anaconda install dash c anaconda protobuf. This will install our protobuf compiler. And again, it'll take a while. 
Next, install pillow by typing pip install pillow. Easy enough. Then install lxml by typing pip install lxml. And then in Jupyter, pip install Jupyter with a Y. Okay, and the last one to install is matplotlib. Type pip install matplotlib. Okay, there's two other packages, pandas and python opencv, which we aren't used by TensorFlow, but they will be used by the XML to CSV and generate TF record scripts from my repository, so we need to install them too. <clears throat> to install them, enter pip install pandas, and then type pip install opencv python. Okay, that's all the packages. Now that we've got all the necessary packages installed in this virtual environment, we need to add some folders to the environment variables. Navigate to the models folder from the object detection folder and copy the path to the models folder. Then in the command prompt, enter set python path equals, and then you can just paste the path, but the models and then semicolon models research semicolon one more time, models, research, slim, and enter that. Now we've given this Python path variable a direction to the models folder, the models research folder, and the models research slim folder. Then we'll add that Python path variable to the path variable by typing set path equals parenthesis, I mean, um, percentage mark path, percentage mark, semicolon, Python path. There we go. Now you can see what this does to the environment variables by typing echo path. This will give a big long list of directories that the path is pointing to. And then you can also echo Python path, which you can see is added at the very end of our path. And that's got the three directories that we pointed it to. Now, if you ever close out of the Anaconda command prompt window, these environment variables will need to be reset. So you just need to redo this step if you ever wind up closing out of this window. Okay, we're almost done setting everything up. Now we have to compile the protobuf files, which are used by TensorFlow to configure model and training parameter parameters. <clears throat> so in the Anaconda command prompt, go ahead and change directories to the models research directory. Whoops, not like that. See TensorFlow one models research. Okay, and then from there, go to my GitHub repository where the tu tutorial is and um, go to step 2f and copy this big protop command. It's a long command so it's better to just copy and paste it rather than try and type it all out. And then go ahead and just paste it right into the command prompt and press enter. And you'll see that goes and creates an underscore pb2 file for every proto file that was in that protos folder. Okay, finally from this directory, from the research directory, there's two more commands to run. Python setup.py build, which takes a little while, and then Python setup.py install. Okay, that's it. The TensorFlow object detection API is now all set up to use pre-trained models for object detection or to train a new one. You can test it out at this point by opening the object detection tutorial script in Jupyter Notebook. Change to the object detection directory Oops. And then issue this command. Jupyter notebook object underscore detection underscore tutorial dot ipy notebook. I misspelled ipy. Okay. This opens the script in your default web browser and allows you to step through the code one section at a time. You can step through each section by clicking the run button at the top. Part of the script downloads the full SSD MobileNet V1 model, so it takes a while to complete. It's about 74 megabyte download. Okay, looks like it's downloaded. Okay, so once you've stepped all the way through the code, it takes a little while to run through this last section too, but you should see two images at the bottom, one with some dogs labeled, 
than one with some kites and people labeled. Um, if you see this, that means everything's working properly. If not, the notebook will report any errors that were encountered. You can look at the appendix of my uh, GitHub tutorial to see the common errors and their resolutions. Now that the TensorFlow Object Detection API is all set up and ready to go, we need to provide the images it will use to train a new detection classifier. TensorFlow needs hundreds of images of an object to train a good detection classifier. To train a robust classifier, the training images should have random objects in the image along with the desired objects and should have a variety of background and lighting conditions. There should be some images where the desired object is partially obscured, overlapped with something else, or only halfway in the picture. For my pinochle deck detector, I wanted to see how well an object detector could distinguish between different playing cards and if it could work when the cards were overlapping. I took all of the nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, and aces out of a deck of bicycle playing cards and then placed them in various areas around my house. I took pictures of all 24 cards in one area, then moved them to a different area and repeated the process. Each time I repeated the process, I put the cards in harder and harder visual environments with more random objects and busier backgrounds. I tried to include card-like objects in some pictures to help the detector avoid falsely identifying things that look like playing cards. Then, I took around 100 pictures with multiple cards in the picture, and with the cards overlapping. Overall, I used 311 pictures to train my card detector. Alternatively, you can get pictures of your objects through Google image searches or other places online. I recommend having at least 200 pictures overall. Make sure the images aren't too large. They should be less than 200 kilobytes each, and they shouldn't have a resolution higher than 720 by 1280 pixels. The larger the images are, the longer it will take to train the classifier. After you have all the pictures you need, move 20% of them to the object detection test directory, and then 80% of them to the images train directory. Make sure there are a variety of pictures in both the test and train directories. Now that we've gathered lots of pictures of our objects, it's time for the fun part, labeling the objects in the pictures. For TensorFlow to train on what the objects are, you have to label each picture showing where the objects are located. Label image is a great open source image labeling tool for doing this. You can download label image and view its usage instructions on GitHub from the links in the video description below. Once you have it installed, run it. Then open the train directory. The first image in the directory will appear. Click, click the Create Rect Box button and draw a rectangle around the object in the image. Type in a label for the object. Repeat this for the other objects in the image. Then click the Save button to save an XML file with the label data for the image. Click the Next Image button to move to the next picture in the directory and repeat the process. Do this for every image in the train directory and then every image in the test directory. This is a meticulous process that takes a long time, but it's a necessary part of training an object detection classifier. Overall, it took me about an hour to label all of my images. With the images labeled, it's time to generate the TF records that serve as input data to the TensorFlow training model. Your test and train folder should now be full of XML files. These XML files contain the coordinates of the bounding rectangles for each object in the image. <clears throat> to generate TF records from these XML files, we will use the XML to CSV and generate TF record Python scripts. In the command prompt, make sure you're in the object detection folder and then enter Python XML to CSV.py. This creates a train labels and test labels.csv file in the images directory. These CSV files just have the coordinates of the bounding rectangles for every object in every image. Next, open the generate tf record file with the text editor. Replace the label map starting at line 31 with your own label map where each object is assigned an ID number. Then, generate the tf records by entering the following command. Python generate tf record.py dash dash csv input equals images slash train labels dot csv dash dash image dir equals images slash train dash dash output path equals train dot record. There we go. Then repeat the same command except replace every instance of train with test.
OK. This command creates the train and test.record files that will be used to train the new declassifier. There's just a couple more things to do before running training. We need to create a label map for our classifier and then edit the training configuration file. We'll start with the label map. The label map tells the trainer what each object is by defining a mapping of class names to class ID numbers. You can see an example label map in the data directory in the pet label map file. Use a text editor to create a new file and save it as label map.pbtext. Make sure to save it as a .pbtext file and not as just a text file. Save it in the training directory. Then type your label map in into the same format as the pet label map file. My label map is already typed up in my GitHub repository, so I'm just going to copy it over from there. Save the file and close the text editor. Now we need to configure the object detection training pipeline. It defines which models and what parameters will be used for training and points to the training images and data. In the object detection folder, navigate to the samples and configs folder and copy the faster RCNN inception v2 pets config file. Copy it into the training folder and then open it with a text editor. There are several changes to make to the config file, mainly changing the number of classes and examples and adding the file paths to the training data. First, change the num classes variable to the number of classes you want to detect. I'm training my card detector to detect six different cards, so I set num classes to six. Then, change the fine tune checkpoint variable to point at the faster RCNN inception model file. <clears throat> Make sure to use forward slashes in the file path, or else it won't work. I'm just going to copy the path from my GitHub tutorial. Okay, there we go. Similarly, change the input path to point at the train.record file and the label map path to point at the label map file. Again, I'll just copy these from my GitHub tutorial. Okay, we're all set there. Now they have the num examples variable. This is how many test pictures you're using to train <clears throat> your object detector. So to figure out how many test pictures you're using, in case you forgot, you can just go to your test images directory, select all of them, and count the number of items. Here you can see I have 67 test images. So I'll change the number num examples variable to 67. Okay, and then here in the eval input reader section, we have a couple more input paths to configure. This input path will point at the test record file, and then this one again will point at the label map file. So I'll just copy these from my GitHub tutorial. If you copy it from the label from the um, Windows folder, it copies it over with backslashes, and we need to use forward slashes. I'll show you what I mean. See, it uses backslashes. But if you use backslashes in your file path, then it gives you an error for some reason. So I put all of it in forward slashes. <clears throat> Okay, and then that's all the changes we have to make, so we'll go ahead and save the file and close out of it. Alright, we're finally ready to start training the object detection classifier. In the command prompt, make sure you are in the object detection directory. Then type python train.py dash dash log to std error dash dash train beer equal training dash dash pipeline config path equal training slash faster rcnn inception v2 pets dot config whew, and press enter. If everything has been set up correctly, TensorFlow will initialize the training. The initialization can take up to 30 seconds before the actual training begins. When training begins, it will start stepping through training batches and reporting the loss at each step. The loss starts off high and then gets lower and lower as the object detection classifier trains. Training the classifier uses 100% of your CPU and GPU. While training is running, I recommend not doing anything on your computer that requires lots of processing power. You should, constant, you should keep training the classifier until the loss is consistently below 0.05 or so, or until the loss starts to plateau out. You can view the progress of the training job by using TensorBoard. 
To do this, open a new instance of Anaconda Prompt, running it as administrator. Activate the TensorFlow 1 environment by typing activate ten TensorFlow 1. Then change directories to the object detection directory and type tensorboard dash dash logdeer equals, equals training. No spaces. This will create a web page on your local machine at localhost.6006, which can be viewed through the web browser. You can go ahead and copy the address, paste it into your web browser, and it shows you TensorBoard. The TensorBoard page provides information and gra graphs that show how the training is processing. One important graph is the loss graph, which shows the overall loss of the classifier over time. The loss graph will only start to populate after TensorFlow recodes the first training summary, which occurs three to five minutes after training starts. So if you're not seeing anything in the loss graph, just give it a couple minutes. Anyway, we'll allow training to keep running until the loss drops below about 0.05. Okay, so the model has been training for about three hours now, and the loss is consistently below 0.05. The total loss graph in TensorBoard shows that the loss is plateaued out. The model's been training for long enough. Terminate training by pressing Ctrl-C while in the command prompt window. TensorFlow saves training checkpoints every five minutes or so and stores them in the training folder. The checkpoint at the highest step count will be used to generate our classifier. Now that training is complete, the last step is to generate the frozen inference graph. Make a note of what the step count of the highest model checkpoint is in the training folder. In this case, it's 53,698. Go to the command prompt and make sure you are in the object detection directory. Paste the export inference graph command from step 7 of my GitHub tutorial into the command prompt. Replace the xxxx with the actual model number of the highest checkpoint which in this case is 53,698. Then press enter. Okay, this creates a frozen inference graph PB file in the inference graph folder in the object detection directory. The .pb file contains the object detection classifier. Now the object detector is all ready to go. You can use the Python scripts provided with my repository to test it out on an image, video, or webcam feed. To test your object detector out on a USB webcam feed, type idle in the command prompt and press enter to open the Python shell. From there, open the object detection webcam Python script. Before running the script, you need to modify the num classes variable to equal the number of objects you want to detect. For my pinochle deck card detector, there are six cards I want to detect, so I set num classes equal to six. Now, run the script. If everything is working properly, the object detector will initialize for about 10 seconds and then display a window showing the webcam feed with the desired objects identified. As you can see, the object detector works decently well at identifying the playing cards laid out on my desk. It also works when the cards are overlapping, which is good because that's what I was going for. You can quit the webcam window by pressing Q. You can also test images and videos in a similar fashion by using the object detection image and object detection video scripts from my repository. Just remember to change the num classes variable in each script. Also, make sure you're running the scripts from inside the TensorFlow 1 environment rather than just from the desktop. If you run it from the desktop, they won't work. If you run into any errors while setting everything up, you can look at the appendix in my written GitHub tutorial to see more errors and their solutions. You can also try Google searching the area as there are usually solutions on TensorFlow's GitHub issue page or on Stack Exchange. Or you can comment on this video with what the error was and I can try and figure it out. If you use this tutorial to train your own object detector, I'd love to see what it is and how it works. Feel free to upload a YouTube video showing off your detector and then post a comment on this video with a link to yours. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope it helps you with your machine learning endeavors. Have fun training!